Welcome to Medical Confessions. Welcome to Medical Confessions. Your remedy for serious <laughs> medicine. I'm Jen. Your remedy for serious medicine. I'm Jen. I'm April. And I'm Scott. Today we're going to be talking about hyperbaric oxygen therapy. <laughs> I think we need to first uh, recognize that we've changed up our format a little bit and we are now doing 10-ish minutes of uh, just a quick down and dirty information on our um, show and then um, if we haven't already addressed it we are now a legitimate podcast you can find us on iTunes um, and so Spotify, Spotify and Google Podcast so now you can listen to the full episode and you can get the quick synopses the 10 minute the more appropriate YouTube videos is what we'll be <laughs> yeah. putting out there and I don't mean appropriate in content but yeah. appropriate in length because rumor promise. has it you YouTubers hate watching our 30 minute videos because <laughs> who wants to sit down for that we are a dog that? shit show when we're yeah, 30 yeah. minute YouTube I believe that videos. was the comment so <laughs> they'll be less than 10 minutes hopefully except for this one might be longer because we're explaining this right now yep absolutely so um, what is hyperbaric oxygen treatment we're just putting people at higher atmospheric pressures and then adding oxygen in that environment and the purpose is we are making inside our bodies a super hyper oxygenated state and we're also taking advantage of some physical laws like Boyle's law and Charles law. Boyle's law which uh, basically in a nutshell just says as long as the temperature is the same if the pressure increases the volume of a gas will decrease. Um, we have a nice little experiment here for you. Oh that's the matter. I like that. Romantic. Romantic. <laughs> in our freezing ass cold studio. This jar will represent our gas bubble inside of your body. Um, the air outside will uh, represent um, the higher pressures of a hyperbaric chamber. As we stick this glass over the candle, the candle burns out the oxygen inside of there and it decreases the pressure and push all the water up inside. And if you can see, our candle is now floating in water. And the flames out and there's more pressure on the outside pushing it in um, so the gas bubble of the inside the jar decreases. I like that. Yay, Boyle's Law. I like that. The second thing is Charles Law. I like that. Charles Law is basically saying that a gas dissolved inside of a liquid um, will be equal to the amount of partial pressure on the surface of that liquid. I like that. The first hyperbaric chamber was invented in 1662 uh, by a doctor in Britain, uh, Hank Henshaw. I like that. 1662. That seems <laughs> crazy. Yeah. A long time ago. Oh, well, <laughs> oxygen wasn't even discovered until 1775. I like that. What? So yeah. how do you build a chamber? He was just using the ambient uh, oxygen. In. But he created a platform for what we now use the hyperbaric chamber for. I like that. So fast forward to 1917, they used the oxygen and the hyperbaric chamber together. I like that. Uh, so 255 years in the making. I like that. Wow. wow. Is there a lot wow. of progress? Can they be proud of that? Or is that kind yeah. of like... I think so. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, you start something way back when, you don't know why it works, but you think it does. And right. then, you know, fast forward and magically it does. I like that. 11 years later in Cleveland, Ohio, uh, Dr. Cunningham built the world's largest hyperbaric chamber. They called it the Air Chamber Hospital. It was five stories tall, 900 ton, and it could accommodate 40 patients at a time. Wow, a five story <laughs> chamber. And so it's not just the patients that are getting treated, it's all of the staff, it's everybody yeah. because it's Everyone. a building. So were the staff incredibly healthy? Because what are the medical <laughs> claims? Like, were they getting the byproduct of all the goodness of this hyperbaric? Probably. Well, it depends on if they had like wounds or something that would. Everyone's got wounds. Like, aren't we all in different. <laughs> not emotional scars. <laughs> No, so the purpose, right? Like, what are we doing with hyperbaric oxygen? We're just putting people at higher atmospheric pressures and then, uh, like you said, adding oxygen in that environment. And the purpose is we are making inside our bodies a super hyper oxygenated state. And we're also taking advantage of some physical laws like Boyle's law and Charles law to help deliver that oxygen um, 
to the tissues that need it. So what are we using that for? What's that good for? Um, the hallmark of this stuff was um, uh, decompression sickness. So divers, they're at higher atmospheric pressures. For every 33 feet, you get one atmosphere. Um, so, you know, on the surface of the water, it's about 14.7 PSI. And then down at 33 feet, then you're obviously at 29.4 PSI. Um, so you, you double your head. atmosphere Stuff. pressure. <laughs> um, anyways, uh, and then every 33 feet you go down, you get one more atmosphere. Um, so when we're breathing compressed air, we've got 21% oxygen normally in the outside air, 78% nitrogen, and 1% of everything else. So as the scuba diver is coming up, the pressure is less, so the nitrogen inside the air that they're breathing slowly expands, expands to the point where it comes out of the bloodstream or that liquid itself and creates a bubble. So they put them at the higher atmospheres. Um, the pressure obviously then decreases the bubble size. You also, if they put 100% oxygen on them, which is, you know, the combination of, of the higher pressure plus the oxygen, um, you get a higher oxygen concentration inside the bloodstream and a lower nitrogen concentration. So the nitrogen bubble will then sort of diffuse back into the bloodstream and also reduce the bubble size. So you're getting kind of two mechanisms there with decompression sickness. Okay, uh, shh. It's his phone. It's your phone? Yeah, it's vibrating. It was oh, vibrating. Weird. Yeah, it was crotch. making. I was. Yeah. Huh. Interesting. That's why I was like looking at his crotch. That was oh. a creep. I was like, it's crotch of pants here. Over here. <laughs> I just felt. But... I was hearing it up here though. It's not even touching the Your table. crotch is vibrating. <laughs> Old crotchy crotch pants those. over here is ruining this episode. Anyways. Oh, okay. All right. Okay. Uh. I kind of Oh, um, we were doing decompression sickness. Um, uh, what they also found out is that, uh, you know, normally red blood cells inside of your um, bloodstream is what's carrying oxygen molecule to all of your tissues. Um, it's the hemoglobin on the red blood cell. The oxygen bound to hemoglobin is usually around 97%. Um, some people can get up to 100%. There's a limit to that. There's only so many hemoglobin molecules and only so much oxygen that can fit on there. So there is a limit. But if you increase the pressure, you can actually force oxygen into your plasma. Um, so normally there's about 1.5 liters per deciliter of oxygen in plasma. At three atmospheres, you can get six liters of oxygen um, per deciliter in your plasma. And the reason why that's important is because that six liters is about the exact same amount that hemoglobin can actually carry. In the 1960s, it, um, it was funny, there was a doc who, who took a bunch of pigs and took out all their red blood cells and their white blood cells and left only plasma in their vasculature put them in hyperbaric conditions and they were able to, to just live normally. The second they were removed, obviously they died. Oh, uh, they're uh, pigs. <laughs> what happens then? What conditions do we want where we have oxygen on our red blood cells and oxygen in the plasma and hyperoxygenate people? Wound cares. Wound care is a big deal. Usually the number one reason for getting hyperbaric oxygen therapy. All of the studies have come out and say wounds heal a whole lot faster under these conditions. Another thing you can use it for is CO poisoning. Uh, so carbon monoxide. Carbon monoxide binds to that hemoglobin in the red blood cell about 200 times as strong as oxygen does. Oxygen will compete with carbon monoxide for spots on the hemoglobin. Um, in normal atmospheric pressures, it takes about 300 minutes for that to happen. Um, if you put somebody on a 15, 100 15 liters, 100% oxygen, it takes about 90 minutes. At uh, three atmospheres, it takes about 32 minutes um, to get off that oxygen or to get off the carbon monoxide. Um, but during that 32 minutes, if you put them at higher pressures, you can also deliver the oxygen in the plasma so they get reperfused while they're also getting the carbon monoxide blown off their hemoglobin. So those are the three main things that uh, hyperbaric oxygen therapy treats. Um, the FDA has quite a few things that they've approved it for, things like crush syndrome, sudden hearing loss, um, and you know, what, 13 others-ish. Um, so all of those are a physiology lecture in and of themselves, so we won't go into them because we're trying to save you guys the amount of time you'll have to watch this thing, but just know it's used for a lot of things. Well, and I, um, like I mentioned um, in past episodes, what, if the FDA approves it, it's gotta be legit. Like they're not quick to approve anything, and you said Medicare, Medicare supports a lot of these. Medicare uh, supports it for wound so, care, like, they, they want They have it. to be legit treatments if those two things have gone through. Well, and the one thing we'll touch on, because there's so many websites out there who say it's good for things like autism and multiple sclerosis and all sorts of these conditions, and it's not. It's never been shown to be. Um, well, is it not, or it's yeah. just there's not been a Cochrane study on it yet? <laughs> Cochrane <Yeah>. review. <laughs> Funny you should bring up reviews, because in 2012, there was a, re a review called uh, Hyperbaric Oxygen Therapy and Cancer, and they reviewed all of the studies uh, 
uh, with hyperbaric oxygen therapy on cancers. Um, and it was originally thought that since cancers in and of themselves are usually hypoxic, those tumors, um, because, you know, and oxygen would help them grow faster, they thought it would actually increase uh, the tumor size quicker and you know hasten your demise and what they found out is it doesn't actually do that but it, there are some types of cancers that it will actually reduce tumor size and help with and so this study that or this review that came out in 2012 said look you know there are some cancers like uh, you know breast cells and uh, other types that it kind of helped reduce the tumor size and they didn't know why because it doesn't make sense um, so it's not an approved treatment yet because they don't know why they ought to figure out the mechanisms first but um, stay tuned on the cancer therapy for this sort of thing. Well, if our topic interests you today, please check out our podcast for a more well-expanded uh, interview and discussion on this topic. Um, also, we have uh, a, we'll call it a in-house guest. We're going to interview somebody in the profession that's going to help better explain things from the medicinal side of delivery. And as always, if you have suggestions on how to make our show better, please uh, write us a review.